And it's daybreak break on our eyes, news, and it's time for the press preview. A fresh look at what's on the front pages of the papers. We'll start with our sister publication this day. This day has it on the headlines. It says, be firm. Of course, you see a picture of the president uh, be, uh, receiving the chairman of the APC there the first time he's visited after the consensus agreement uh, that made him chairman. We'll be firm, fair to all party members. Buhari charges the APC chairman, Abdullahi Adama, would uh, ride or two. Says he will continue to entrench democratic principles and governance. Adamo, I am now in charge. All right, just uh, below, above the logo of this day, Forbes. Aliko remains Africa's richest man as Adenuga edges from B to third place. And then at the top mass, military launches new operation to curb oil theft, bunkering in Niger Delta with about uh, three riders. Demobilizes 30 illegal refineries. Carry forces return to normal production in two months. Edges collective action and insist pipeline vandalism and elitist business. We'll stop there for this day. And the Punch newspaper, leading with this story about the National Assembly and their fights with Malami, says appeals electoral act judgment. President Buhari's ministers await final verdict, put 2023 ambitions on hold. Lawan gives aides planning to contest ultimatum to resign on why Gigi's men comply. Meanwhile, Cross River APC asks Ayade's men to resign while Balchi governor orders aides to step aside. 2022 budget deficit jumps 7.35 trillion naira. Buhari to borrow 965 billion naira. That's on page 21 above the nameplate of the punch this morning. Train victims' families protest at transportation ministry briefing. Uh, the Guardian newspaper, Eager's murder. I'm willing to go to court. That's according to Shoika. Uh, blackout on Lagos International Airport Road raises security concerns. Again, vandals attack. The South South Bielsa pipeline disrupt a gyps gas export. And uh, mixed reactions as court upholds Ayade's election. It's on page three. The nation newspapers, uh, the headline has been read. Uh, let's look at some of the stories on the front page there. Uh, 22 budget deficit to hit 7.38 trillion. Buhari rights lawmakers. Then just below the nation logo, uh, RMAFC proposes 3.3% cut in federal government allocation. States can start to get more. And then you see there, uh, Kano sues federal government for 50 billion. The faction court declares the sack Ayade uh, and deputy. That's it on the nation. Some international papers this morning. The Guardian UK leading with s this story says Sunak's wife may have avoided £20 million in UK tax. Chancellor's reputation further hit by Aster Murti's non dumb status. And that's a picture of Rishi Sunak and his wife there who pays £30,000 a year to remain non domiciled more headlines on the Guardian UK. Limit waist size to half your height. Uh, health workers are telling Britons. And also Russian troops recorded talking of killing civilians. The Financial Times. Uh, uh, Rusal becomes first Russian group to call for Bucha war crime inquiry. All right. Uh, the Independent. Uh, but taking hypocrisy of Sunak on tax cuts as a writer there chancellor and wife has to come clean on finances the city that paid green price for resistance uh, that's what we're talking about uh, the war in ukraine it's time now to bring emmanuel bello i do have some more papers to read all right uh, for the press preview let's bring in emmanuel bello Emmanuel, glad to have you join us this morning on day break all right uh be firm, fair to all party members. Buhari is charging the APC chairman who went, of course, on his first visit to president uh, after his, since he became the chairman. What's your sense? 
Well, uh, good morning. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, what else is, is there to tell the, the chairman than and, and to tell him that he should be uh, fair, he should be firm? So I, I think it's, you know, it's uh, routine uh, the advice to, to, from the president, who is the leader of the party, uh, to the incoming chairman, or rather the chairman. So uh, it's, uh, the, but uh, that's what he's advising. We'll now see how he's able to do that because as we speak, he, uh, even the, the chairman himself uh, knows that uh, he has got a lot of work ahead of him. Uh, already the other day he was chiding uh, both Governor Erufai and Amechi for the kind of comments they made uh, concerning the, uh, the train hijack and uh, saying that they don't, you don't use a knife to, so he's, be, he's beginning to play those rules already of guiding the party, guiding uh, stakeholders of the, of the party. Uh, but now he needs to also uh, get ready for the huge, huge challenge uh, posed by the opposition party. Uh, the opposition party getting ready uh, to square off with him. So he is on one hand, and uh, Yoche Ayu, uh, uh, Dr. Yoche Ayu is on the other hand. So uh, it's going to be the wit of these two men, uh, in mostly among, uh, among the other parties, how they're able to paddle uh, the crisis within their parties, but now uh, President Buhari uh, giving him uh, the first uh, charge, uh, command, uh, asking him to uh, to be fair and to be firm in all that he's doing. Uh, it's a good charge. Uh, what remains now is how he carries it out, uh, considering all the other internal crises the APC is, fa is facing in some states, uh, especially issues of congresses that have not been resolved. So those are the kind of things that this chairman is going to be uh, saddled with. And of course, uh, the general perception of APC as a party that has failed um, the nation. Uh, though the president is there, you know, still beating his chest and saying that uh, the party is done well for women, for youth, for everybody. It is this chairman's role now to interpret that to the rest of this country and to convince us that the APC is done well and uh, can be re-elected. Well, Emmanuel, um, some political appointees that have some 2023 ambition and might have to put that ambition on hold. The Punch newspaper says the National Assembly is fighting Malami back as they set to appeal the Electoral Act's judgment. We know there was a contentious section, section 8412, that the Federal High Court in Omaha uh, ruled should be deleted. Now, we know that they were in the National Assembly was not even joined in the suit, so they have to apply, first of all, get leave from the courts to be joined in the suit before they can even appeal that. What are your thoughts on this back-to-back -back fight on this section 8412? Well, well, you know, it's a pop, uh, popular uh, clause, a lot of Nigeria actually applauding it, although the manner in which the <laughs> National Assembly went about it, uh, which was clearly a case of them, you know, going, uh, you know, the, the president signed uh, uh, that, uh, the electoral uh, uh, law with the hope or with the belief or the agreement that th that clause was going to be removed. But of course, we all follow the story that it, it, it was, it's not removed. And a lot of Nigeria applauding in that look. If you're going to go into any election, go into it like every other person is going to go into it. You know, don't have an undue advantage of an office that you're holding. Resign and run the race uh, with everybody. You're like, just be like every other person. So, uh, that is what that clause seeks to, to, to get, get, get at. And um, but some people say it will brighten the chances of uh, people and, of course, take away the undue advantage. Some people might have, like his minister, like the president's minister, those of them interested. Like Malami himself, who is interested, uh, though he's denied it, uh, interested in uh, political office. Uh, so uh, people like that, so, or the rumor that Mechi, the minister who uh, is said to also have presidential ambition, those, those kind of uh, people, uh, uh, well, it, it's, uh, it, this kind of clause uh, targets them to say, look, don't go into election with an or with the, that the you know the adv the undue or rather extra advantage of an office. If you are going to run for office, run like every other person. Even at the state levels, uh, commissioners have been told already, or special advisors have been told to resign uh, to run. Some states have asked them to resign to run for uh, for for office. Uh, getting the and a lot of people have actually questioned the fact that after the national assembly has done something, uh, the judiciary can, cannot just come and actually. Uh, upend uh, uh, those uh, those decisions. So uh, those are the issues involved. But uh, like I say, it's popular with Nigerians, uh, and a lot of people believe that yes, if you're going to run for office, uh, please step out of your whatever office you are, and then run on a you know on a level playing field like every other person, uh, so that everyone will have the same chance at at winning.
of having chances at winning at the Guardian newspaper is reporting that the Vice President will disclose his intention in a matter of days and uh, they're saying a top presidency source has revealed this to them. Um, Emmanuel, we shouldn't expect a shocker from the VP. I mean, given that a man regarded as his boss is already uh, throwing, in his, throwing his hat into the ring uh, for the top job, should we? No, but what uh, worries me, Kenneth, is the back and forth about, uh, you know, Vice, Vice President Osibanjo, the denials, and then, uh, you know, perhaps the other day we woke up with uh, the wild news of his, uh, of his declaration. Then, uh, of course, he denied it imme immediately. Then, um, in fact, <laughs> something was making the rounds that looks as if it was a speech by, by him. Of course, that also was denied so roundly uh, for declaration. So, uh, Guardian is reporting again now that in a matter of time he's going to uh, uh, declare. I think a lot of people, he's got a lot of fans, he's got so, so many groups, you know, rooting for him. And you are right, uh, the, uh, the whole, uh, you know, image of his uh, boss, uh, his benefactor, uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, who is also in the race already, one of the first to, to declare. That too is agitating the minds of people that are looking into that development. So for the VP Osibanjo, a lot of people uh, have this question still hanging. Will he run? Will he declare? And when he eventually declares, how is he going to square up with uh, the personality of, uh, of uh, someone that, like you say, is regarded generally as his boss? Will that not be, uh, will that not be a clash of interest? What, what happens uh, to that uh, relationship? Uh, don't forget that uh, he's, he's a rhythm pastor and the uh, Adeboy recently came out, Pastor Adeboy came out to say that, look, he's not even ready to support any presidential candidate yet. So all that, all that we factor into what uh, this vice president is going to do. But uh, talk about his fan base, he seems to be really energizing the, you know, the, uh, the polity. A lot of people, especially among the young people, see him as a, as a credible uh, candidate. Uh, so uh, I, he, when he declares and if he does that, I, I think that will also a further further bring back uh, bring up this, these issues how does he look into the face of his um, benefactor what's uh, what are the issues uh, what, is, what is he even running on is, is he running on experience or is he running on his cool demeanor as somebody who you know who has caught that image of a professorial calm uh, nice guy who's going to do uh, the job so those are the things uh, people are looking at some people even que question that uh, say look uh, he doesn't come across as like his boss like a very tough uh, guy, but again, some people are endeared to him also because of that quality. What uh, what they see in him as a different kind of politician. So we all await th that declaration w when it happens. We'll await it when it happens, if it happens. Uh, but military is launching a new operation to curb oil theft and bunkering in the Niger Delta. Kiari says this particular problem is elitist. Uh, how will this help? You know maybe to get more revenue from uh, this particular uh, natural resource that we have. Well, you know, it's also a victory for what we have been reporting, especially the this day newspaper, you know, it has been in the forefront of reporting those crises in the oil sector. Emmanuel Adis reports on the crisis in the oil sector and especially, most importantly, the issue of theft. And yesterday there was a report too that some international bodies believe that we are at record high when it comes to oil theft uh, in, in, that, in, that, in, in that development. So, so this is helping, and uh, Kerry is already, you know, uh, you know, happy and about it. Uh, some stakeholders are happy about it that this is going to normalize production. Uh, if you look at the fact that we can't even meet the kind of output, the global output, the whole world is waiting for us. We couldn't take advantage of the emergencies around the world uh, to meet our quota. And apart from the other crises in the sector, like the problem of ref refinery and all that, oil theft seems to be the biggest problem. Uh, so this action, this military action, is taking off that and normalizing things. I think it's, it's good news uh, generally uh, for the sector. But how this, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the get, gets to be done is another thing that we must stay on the story. But thank God that our reports are resonating in the right places because we've been talking about those thefts for a very long time. And now, clearly, something has been done uh, about it. Uh, they are, they are go they've gone beyond talking tough to actually destroying those uh, illegal refineries in those places and, of course, restoring some normalcy in the sector. So it's a good one. And, uh, but the, beyond all of that, uh, they, they need to have our own refineries and uh, to deal with, deal with the crisis of, uh, of uh, serious importation will also help uh, that sector.
Definitely, Manuel. Good to see and hear that Emmanuel Ade's reports are uh, being listened to and is causing some sorts of actions to be taken. Thank you so much for joining us today on Press Preview. That's it.